Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Volker. I am here in Lake Oswego, joined by Sarah Elmsley, as well as Naman Mysorala, our expert elite. We're going to have Dave Pothier in our Manchester office moderating, and Steve Bissett and Victoria Studley will be presenting our Build your AutoCAD IQ session today, and uh, you're going to be going into the third dimension with this one here, an introduction to 3D modeling. Before we get started, I have a little housekeeping to do. So we encourage you to leave your questions in the chat window. We will be answering those throughout this webinar, and we will also be recording this session, and of course the links will be ma made available, all the links in this particular slide deck that you see will be made available to you, and they already are actually. Um, uh, you have them in your Volker? reminder. Yes. Volker, uh, your slide, uh, you're still on the first slide, you haven't switched to the second slide yet. Okay, that's not good. You need to unpause. Yeah. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you've been here before, uh, those who have been here, welcome back. Uh, you're aware of my awkward moments. For those who are new, uh, this is me. But uh, anyway, there's our first slide. We're going to get past that because I've introduced us. Victoria and Steve, by the way, as well as Dave, are in our Manchester office on the East Coast. So a um, little bit of a time difference here. But that's okay. This is the internet. So before we get started, again, this session will be recorded. All links are available to you. So you'll be able to get all this information, the slide deck, all of our um, uh, data set files, as well as a script to, to work through this stuff after the webinar. We also have of course, previous webinars. I think this is like webinar number 35. So these are just some of the webinars that we have available for you to review. Uh, they are on our uh, YouTube channel, Build Your AutoCAD IQ in the Auto AutoCAD Exchange channel. Sorry about that. And um, check these out. We also have the uh, data sets for this available in the same link that we are providing. We are all part of Autodesk technical support. So one of the things we like to show is the Autodesk knowledge network. We get a lot of questions there, where can I find this, where can I find that, where can I get more information on this or that. Well, it's all available here on the AKN. Um, today I am showing some of the top downloads and articles available to you here. So we have some new hot fixes and updates available for you on this website service pack for AutoCAD, also some links for free education software for students and teachers. So uh, these are great resources available on this particular website. Uh, free file viewers, people are always wanting to be able to view those files and even plot them and uh, the file viewers available will allow you to do so. There are other links for downloads, service packs and hotfix fixes that you may need for AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, as well as any of the vertical applications. So uh, check out this website, it's, it's really good. So before we get started with today's agenda, I would like to run a few polls. And um, we did have some problems with these, so you may even get out of having to answer polls, but I am going to run the first one right now. And basically, is this your first AutoCAD Build Your IQ webinar? I'll let that run for a few moments here. Now, it looks like we're getting quite a few return attendees, so I guess we aren't doing too bad here. Again, welcome back, everybody, and thank you for joining us if you're new. So let's go ahead and take care of another one here real quick. 
which AutoCAD-based application do you use? We are trying to expand a little bit here Let's see. with our webinars. So it's always good to know who's running what. Today's session is more 3D, so it applies more to AutoCAD and the verticals. Although you, people using AutoCAD LT are going to be receiving drawings that may have 3D objects in them. So it's good to know how to work with those tools. All right, 48% using AutoCAD, 20 LT, and even split between the others. Thank you. I think, let's see, we'll go ahead and take care of this one here as well. We had an answer day event last week. We wanted, we feel it was a success, and we wanted to know, did you attend that event? Yeah, okay. Well, if we ever have another one, you need to show up. It was a great time for everybody. We were able to answer a lot of questions and uh, had a lot of great feedback about it. And I'm hoping that those who attended got something out of it as well. One more, and then we're going to let uh, get into this webinar of ours. In this particular poll, we're just curious, do you use 3D, have you, in AutoCAD, AutoCAD-based applications, or other applications? Okay. All right. Well, about 60% said yes in AutoCAD and 18% uh, in others. So uh, the pressure's on, Steve, Victoria. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at today's agenda. All right, so we're going to begin with Victoria, showing us a little bit about 3D navigation in AutoCAD using the, uh, working with the UCS view cubes and the visual styles we have available. And then moving on to the 3D modeling tools, which include the primitives, extrude, and press pull, all of these available on the ribbon here. Revolve, Loft, and Sweep, and of course Union, Subtract, and Intersect, so quite a bit of stuff there. And then we're going to be handing it over to Steve to put it all together, show us how it works. So let's take a look at the demo here and go a little bit further after that as well. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Victoria. Thanks, Volker. All right, thank you. All right, before we start, can you see my screen? We can, and we can hear you. Excellent. All right, welcome everybody. I'm glad to have you all here, and uh, really excited to show you some 3D functionality in AutoCAD today. So let's start out by talking about um, the environment that you're looking at right here. Um, so we're looking at a 2D drawing, and you're typically used to working in uh, 2D as if you're drawing on a regular piece of paper. Um, so we have what's called the UCS, which is down here in your left-hand corner. Uh, you might have talked about this with Volker in the past. Um, so you have your two dimensions, your X and your Y. The X goes uh, left to right. It's your horizontal plane. Y goes top to bottom. It is your vertical plane. And then today, we're going to add in this third plane. Um, it is the z-axis, which is right here, and it's as if it's coming out at, at you from the screen. Um, so you'll notice that I, um, I just flipped the, uh, what's called the view cube here in the upper right-hand corner of my screen. Uh, the view cube is a 3D visualization tool that helps you navigate around the model um, when you're working with 3D objects, makes it a a lot easier to move around and manipulate things in your workspace. So using the view cube, you can switch quickly from, uh, let's go back to that top view here. Uh, you can switch quickly by using the arrows to flip to your front view, your right view, your back view, your left view, 
and if I click the bottom one here, the bottom view of your model, and you'll see the geometry um, from different angles that way. Um, let's see, uh, you also have this home button if you're ever trying to get back to that uh, default 3D view uh, where you see all three axes of your UCS. Um, you click that little home button up here and it will bring you back to what's called the Southwest Isometric View. And Southwest Isometric um, is that bottom left-hand corner, um, or top left-hand corner here, sorry. Uh, I guess it sort of depends on which way you're, you're considering up. Um, if we click on this one, this is uh, Southeast Isometric and so on and so forth. Um, the last tool uh, that I want to talk about here is um, 3D Orbit, uh, as far as navigation is concerned. And there's a shortcut for 3D Orbit. If you hold down the Shift key on your keyboard and uh, middle mouse button, uh, click, press down that middle mouse button on your mouse, and uh, just drag the mouse around, um, you can manipulate the, the model uh, in a more free sort of way. Um, if you're not happy with a particular view, you know, maybe I want to see um, underneath these corners here. I can just sort of swivel that using 3D Orbit. Now if I get a little crazy and I uh, can't quite get back to where I'm, um, I can't quite figure out what's going on in my model, remember that home button is always right here and it'll bring you back to that orientation you were originally in. Oh, I almost missed something. Okay, um, let's talk about the world coordinate system here. Uh, your WCS is your default uh, world coordinate system, um, meaning that your X, Y, and Z are oriented in this uh, configuration that we just talked about, X being horizontal, Y being vertical, and Z coming up straight out of the page. Uh, you can change this. Um, you can use these tools up here on your ribbon. Um, or you can enter the uh, UCS command. This is my um, preferred method here, it's just to enter it at the command line. Um, and if you enter in uh, X, the default um, for X is just to flip it 90 degrees, and you'll see that the UCS has, has flipped on me. And if I start to use 3D Orbit, you can get a little lost. If you come back to your home view, you'll notice that back is now on top and everything's a little out of order. Um, the quickest way to get back here if you get a little disoriented is just to click on WCS and you see it brings us right back to where we were. Top is top again. Okay, so moving on, uh, let's talk a little bit about the workspace that we're in here. Uh, the screen might look a little different than your uh, uh, typically used to seeing uh, in some of these webinars. Um, we usually work in what's called the drafting and annotation workspace. And that, um, you can switch your workspace down in the status bar here by clicking on the workspace gear. And drafting and annotation is still here, so if you want to get back to it, there it is. But uh, we've gone into the 3D basics workspace. There's also a 3D modeling workspace, which has some more complex tools uh, for manipulating surfaces and meshes, section planes, parametric modeling, but we're not going to get into those today. Uh, it's a little heavy. We just want to keep it light and um, go through some of the very basic 3D tools. So this 3D basics workspace is the perfect place to start. Okay. So with that said, let's get into some of the tools. Up here on the left, um, you'll notice we're on the home ribbon. We're basically going to be staying in this home ribbon on the Create tab and the Edit tab. Uh, everything else down here we won't really be getting into, uh, but you've got some basic 2D drawing commands, um, some selection tools, uh, some of your coordinate system tools, as well as your layer tools. So starting on the left-hand side here, we have 3D primitives. And these 3D primitives, uh, box, cylinder, cone, sphere, pyramid, wedge, torus, and polysolid, uh, they, are, um, they are a quick way to get started with 3D objects. Um, so think of like a quick massing model uh, if you're uh, familiar with uh, architecture or, and that's, that's my best analogy, I guess. 
So let's start with the box. Uh, if I click on that box command, it's going to prompt me at the command line to pick the uh, first corner of the box. So I'm just going to enter in 0, 0 on my keyboard, hit enter, and you'll notice that the start, um, uh, the box has been started down at my origin. Uh, then if I drag out, uh, the box will dynamically shift as I move it, and you'll notice that I'm prompted to uh, select that second corner. Now you can manually enter numbers, or you can just kind of pick a random spot and manipulate the box later, and I'll show you how that's done. So we'll just pick a spot, and if you drag up, you'll notice that instead of just being a, uh, a rectangle in 2D, uh, now we have that 3D box that's projecting those lines up for you. So I'm going to click and create my box. And if I click this, uh, I have my properties palette docked over on the left so that we can take a look at some of the properties here. Uh, so over on the left, um, you can change the position, you can change the length, the width, the height, the rotation of this box. Um, so let's just change this. Maybe we want it to be 24 by 24 by 24. And if you notice that uh, dynamically change that just very quickly on the fly. Um, you can also zoom in and take a look at these little uh, triangles, little blue triangles here um, that are popping out. These are grips that allow you to also manipulate the uh, 3D object. Uh, depending on the 3D object that you're using, those grips will change. So let's throw um, the torus is kind of a cool command. Let's uh, throw a torus in here as well. And I'm just going to pick a spot off to the side here. And it prompted me to pick a center, so I picked a center point off to the side. And you'll notice that it's asking me for a radius. And I'm just going to eyeball the radius here. And then the next thing it's asking me for, now I could sit here and try to eyeball what I want this torus to look like, but it's this one's a little difficult to work with um, just by cl clicking and dragging. So what I want to do is just enter a diameter uh, or a radius. So it's prompting me for the radius. That is the default. And let's just say I want it to be one inch. I'm going to hit enter. And now you'll notice that the tube is a one inch diameter tube all the way around. So those are primitives. Uh, let's move down the line. Let's take a look at extrude. So extrude will let you uh, pick 2D geometry. It has to be closed geometry um, in order to be extruded. And um, let's say we want to create a 3D gear out of this uh, geometry right here. So I'll pick these two pieces. And once I'm done picking the number of items that I want to extrude, I'll click Enter. And then, again, you can just sort of drag that up and eyeball it, or I want it to be six inches tall. So I'm just going to enter six at the command line and enter. Now this gets a little bit difficult to see when you're working with complex geometry. So you can't really tell what's on top and what's overlapping and what's not. So what I'm going to do is, um, so, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is take a look at these visual styles. Um, so up in the left-hand corner here, you'll see 2D wireframe. If you pick on that, we'll give you this drop-down of different visual styles in your drawing. These are customizable through the Visual Styles Manager, but um, there are a lot of good presets in there, too, that you can just start running with. Um, so I'm going to change this to Hidden. And if you notice, as soon as I clicked Hidden, the, um, the lines disappeared. And now you can see that this uh, centerpiece is actually solid, where in 2D wireframe it's not necessarily clear that that's a solid object. Now there are two ways to get that gear um, so that the, uh, the center of it is not solid anymore, and uh, we actually cut the geometry out of the middle of it. Um, so if I delete this, you'll see that you know that middle piece is, is still solid. So I'll just undo and use this, um, there's a subtract command. We're going to jump a little bit. We'll go over to this edit tab. Uh, if I use the subtract command, it's going to prompt me to select my first object. This is always the one that you want to keep. And if you're ever uh, unsure about 
what it's asking you to do. Take a look at the command line and it says select solid surfaces and regions to subtract from. So I'm going to pick that first outer ring, click enter, and the second thing that it asks me to do is pick the item to subtract. So I'm going to pick this second solid and click enter and the geometry disappears. Now this is a single solid object uh, with that gear cut out of the middle. So there is a quicker way to do this and that is the press pull command over here on the edit tab or the edit panel. So if I click press pull it will detect the center of this geometry here by uh, mouse over it. You'll see both of those uh, gear rings light up and I'll click on it and it detects it and it cuts the center out of that automatically. So it saves me a lot of work. I'll click on uh, or I'll enter six and you get the same result in a fraction of the time. So I really love that press pull command. Um, if you want to um, if you want to use it on existing geometry, I'm going to try to use it on this gear here, but I don't know if it's going to work for me. Sometimes if geometry gets a little complex, the press pull has a hard time, um, but we'll try it. So let's see if we can, okay. All right, so we grab this face here, and you'll see if I wanted to adjust just that face, I could pull it to wherever I want, and it'll um, adjust that geometry very quickly. So I'll undo that for now. All right. Uh, on to the next uh, command here. Let's talk about Revolve. Uh, Revolve will let you take a, um, a 2D, uh, well I have a spline here, but really any 2D geometry, and um, revolve it around a central axis. So let's say we wanted to turn this into a, um, like a banister or a doorknob. Uh, imagine something that is perfectly symmetrical um, in a circular fashion, but then might have some really complex, uh, you know, peaks and valleys in it like this. So if I use Revolve, it's going to prompt me to select that geometry. And then I hit Enter. And the next thing it's asking me for is the central axis. So I could pick X, Y, or Z, or I could pick a couple of points here. But um, what I'm going to use today is the object. Uh, option. So I'm going to click on O for object, or you can enter O at the command line and hit enter. And then you'll notice the pick box shows up and I can click that central axis. And now this will move dynamically and I can again pick any spot I want on the map or I can enter anywhere between one degree and 360 degrees. So what I'd like to do here is just, uh, I'm going to enter 180 degrees. And now I'm going to go back and use that 3D orbit command. So that's shift, middle mouse button, drag. And you can see what we've got there. I'm going to go back to my home view. Uh, occasionally the home view will change to a perspective. Uh, view, and I'm just going to go back and put this in parallel. Perspective is useful for um, rendering to get you a more realistic look, but when you're working with uh, geometry, you mostly want to keep that in parallel so that you're working accurately. Okay, so the next command here is loft. Loft um, will uh, take these different um, these different 2D boxes, and uh, let me show you from the front view. They are at different elevations. So this one is at an elevation of zero. You can see on the properties palette there. Uh, this one here is at an elevation of four inches. This one is at one foot six. This one is at two feet. And I'm going to go back to my home view. And what we're going to do is Uh, use that loft command to create a contour between them. So watch this dynamically build as I pick and pick and pick, and you can see it just create the contours between the, the surfaces there, between the, uh, the boxes. I'll click enter. I'm just going to accept the default. There are a lot of other um, commands uh, and options buried in some of these uh, tools, but like I said, today 
just the bare basics. So we're just going to accept the default, and that gets us pretty much what we're looking for. And if you want to see, um, you see how this looks very flat. If you want to see um, some, see those contours pop out a little bit, you might play around with the visual style. Take a look at conceptual or uh, realistic. If you're working in conceptual or realistic, they tend to take up a little more of your resources. So if you're working in large models, it can be a little bit difficult to move around. Um, so I recommend hidden or 2D wireframe when you're just uh, uh, just uh, drafting. Okay, so let's see. Is this my last command? This is my last command. All right. Okay, so sweep. Let's take a look at sweep. Um, sweep will allow me to uh, sweep a um, a 2D closed geometry along a line or a path. Um, so I have this two-inch diameter circle drawn, and I'm just going to pick that as the object to be swept. And click Enter, and then it's asking me to select a path. So I'm going to select this path right here that I've drawn, and you'll see that that two-inch diameter has been swept along this path like a pipe, and it does come in handy for pipes and, and that sort of thing, uh, pipes and railings. Oh. You know what, I almost missed two. Uh, really quickly, before I turn this over to Steve, I'm just going to take this, I'm going to look at top view, I'm going to move my torus just by grabbing the grip and dragging it down. And I'm going to go back to my southwest isometric view. And you'll see that these are overlapping. And sometimes you might want to uh, combine geometry together, um, either uh, combine it or subtract one from the other in order to punch a hole, um, or maybe you just want to keep the area that um, uh, where the two objects meet. So let's take a look at a couple of these objects. Um, these two, uh, if I union them together, and you just click on union, select your objects, and hit enter, that's all there is to it, it is now one solid 3D object. Um, so I'm just going to undo that, and what I really wanted to do, so now these are two separate objects, what I really want to do here is use intersect. Um, I just want to be left with that little piece of the torus where it overlaps with the box. So I'll click on intersect, select the two objects, hit enter, and then all I'm left with is this little piece right here. So that is intersect. All right, with that said, I am going to turn the presentation over to Steve, and he is going to demonstrate how to build some, uh, uh, how to build a coffee table with some of these tools. Thank you, Victoria. I think there was a question, Dave, am I correct, that someone was looking for the difference between press pull and extrude? Yes, I was going to wait until a little bit later, but uh, if you wanted to cover that now, that'd be great. This, this might not be a bad time to show. Um, so, extrude, you know, I'll use one of the uh, commands that Victoria had shown earlier of a box. Now, what extrude can do is if you just have a single rectangle, it's going to bring it up in one direction or another. What press pull allows you to do is to grab specific faces. See how these faces are highlighting. So you, if you have, and you can just grab these faces and pull them out as you'd like. Press pull is more of an advanced extrude command where it allows it to be dynamic along all of the, the six sides of the object or, you know, for box anyways. Um, I hope that answered your question. If not, please let us know and we can uh, dive a little deeper at the end. So going into our, um, into our demonstration here, we're going to create this coffee table. First, start it off with some 2D geometry. And please let me know if everybody can see my screen. Yep. Yeah, we're good. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so what I've started with is I've created using actually a 
polyline is the section of our spindle for our table leg. And I have it closed to the center line on each side. Using the view cube, I'm going to switch to my south east isometric view. And I need to use the revolve command. Again, selecting our first object or a polyline. And here I'm going to use object down on the bottom. And I always go back down to my command line just to make sure that I know in what step I am within the command. By selecting object, I can select my center line here. And in this instance, I want to go 360 degrees. I still have to create this top portion of our table leg. So I'm going to use the simple extrude. And since I already know that the top diameter of my spindle is two and three quarters of an inch, I'm going to extrude this object up 2.75 or two and three quarters of an inch. Now I need to move this object down, down in the z-axis so I can have it centered. I'm just going to use the core AutoCAD command move, select my object. Now I have my ortho on or my orthographic projections on. So I'm going to stay it, move my mouse down so I can see that it says Z. And I'm just going to move it down one and a half inches so now that it's centered. Using the union command, I'm going to select both my objects, and now I have one full table leg. I'm kind of thrown with a little bit of problem. I need to get this flipped up onto the ZX plane. I need to turn this vertically. I'm going to cheat a little bit and show you a command that is found in the 3D modeling workspace. It is called 3D Orbit, and it can be found in the Modify tab, or the Modify panel. Or you can just type 3D R and 3D Rotate pops up. Selecting my object, I need to make my base point. So I'm going to grab this bottom center point. And I'm going to go, want to go onto this axis. You have red, green, blue. For this instance, I'm going to go on the red. I'm going to use 90 degrees to flip it upwards. Now let's go back to our 3D basics. Again, just using the move command, I'm going to move my object knowing that this is the outside of where I want this to be using corner point to corner point. Now since I won't want, I want all this to be in a positive z-axis, we need to move this up. Again, just using the move command, select and move up. My table legs are 16 or 1 foot 6 inches tall, so I'm just going to 1.5 feet. And then we have the table leg in a proper spot. Again, using these move commands, we can get to this point where we have all of our table legs spread apart. I'm going to switch over to our moldings. I have to create the frame that will hold these legs together, that holds the legs and the tabletop together. Going back to our primitives, I'm going to use a poly solid. Gives you a couple options in the bottom, outer tight with justify. I'm going to, we already have a predefined height of three. That's what I'm going to continue on with. Here you want to make sure, and I'm going to use the shift mouse to rotate. Right now I'm actually going down the center line. It's not exactly what I want. So we'll escape out of that. We're going to use poly side again, and I'm going to justify, this time I want to justify left, because I want to be on the outside. I'm just going to trace these points. Now one thing you want to also keep in mind is if you're having a hard time seeing where you're drafting, you can always use the shift mouse, middle mouse button or that 3D rotate to bring you to the location that you want to be in. Here we'll use CL for close, as you can see down in the command line. And there we have our molding, which now we need to move up again. So again, going back to the move, Selecting the object, we're going to go up one foot three, since this is three inches tall. Our total height is one foot six. I just used a half of it. Now we want 
the tabletop. So I'm going to use the copy command. I'm going to copy this outline up one foot six inches. Using the press pull command, we can just grab this outside. Remember, well, whatever layer you're on, the 3D object will turn onto that layer. So we want to make sure that we're using unfreeze our tabletop layer. So now when I draw, I will be in the tabletop layer. Bring up, we'll make this tabletop say two inches tall, two inches deep. Now if I change to a conceptual, you now can see that we have our tabletop. There's some other commands that might help add a little bit of extra detail to this table. I'm go back to the 2D wireframe, and I'm going to copy this Autodesk A using the copy command. And we're just going to go from endpoint to endpoint. Now we want to use the press pull command. Press pull is going to make it a little easier um, to create this hole in the table and to create the inlay object. So using press pull, I'm just going to select the A, hit down, hit enter. Now we can delete that object. We need to subtract that object, I apologize. So selecting the tabletop and then the A, we now have a gap which you will be able to see when we look at hidden. You can see right through it, you can see the molding underneath. Well, now we have to infill that. So again, using the press pull, grab, see how it's highlighted. You want to make sure it's highlighted because what it's going to want to do is grab each face. So grabbing where it's highlights. Well, let's see, let's make sure we get it. What we can do is let's kind of, if, if you're having any, any difficulty with the geometry or with selection, happens to everybody, make sure that you always have a copy of what your 2D geometry is off to the side. You'll never know when you'll need it, and if it's not there, you have to do a lot of undoing to get it. What we can do is we can bring this back up to our location. We'll use press pull again. I am having a tad bit of technical difficulty, I apologize. There's another thing that we can do here. Just use the extrude command. I know I need to go down two inches. And now we can just do a simple move. Fill in that gap. One thing that would have been easier is if I had both of those objects, both of the, the tabletop outline, as well as the Autodesk A on the inside, and done the press pull so we're shown the two different objects. With 3D design, there's many different ways and many different workflows that you can use. You'll just need to find which one works best for you. So looking at this, we have two objects, but if I go into a realistic view, it's difficult to see. All I can see is that, that Autodesk A, that 2D geometry. So opening up the properties palette, which Victoria had open automatically. There's a couple ways you can open it. You can right click on an object and go to properties or quick properties, or you can type in properties. And mine is now docked to the left hand side here. It's all a matter of preference. And here we can change the color of this object. You can either change it to a layer or change it to a different color. I'm just going to use a different color for this. And there we have our 3D table using the uh, the, um, the primitives, primitive model techniques as well as the commands within the 3D basics workspace. Going to uh, pass this over and let's Dave, we have any questions about the no. about this at the moment or no I didn't see any, anything that hasn't been answered yet, so we're good. Okay, excellent. 
So Dave, I'm going to pass this back over to you. Okay. And can you see my screen okay? Yes, I can. Okay. So uh, so we just wanted to go through a, a few additional uh, resources for you folks um, that kind of um, help you out with, you know, learning these tools and things. Uh, first, uh, kind of what uh, Volker was talking about earlier is uh, our Autodesk uh, Knowledge Network. Um, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but uh, those folks in uh, technical support like ourselves uh, create articles all the time um, sharing information about uh, how to do things in the software as well as uh, you know, deal with issues in the software. So um, definitely want to check out the uh, knowledge network that uh, is on here. Um, there's the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics. This is, uh, basically brings you to the uh, AutoCAD help file, and it has some great information just about how AutoCAD works and where to get answers to tools and, and things like that. Uh, we have a couple of links here, uh, well, one for uh, kind of an introduction to creating 3D objects, and then uh, a link to uh, how to deal with modifying 3D objects. So you know, want to check those out. And then uh, just a kind of a list of commands that uh, you know for working with 3D models. Um, there's also a, a link to a great art, uh, class that was created at Autodesk University. So if you want to check this out, there's you know, some videos and things in there, and uh, uh, again, it'd be a nice introduction to uh, working with uh, 3D. Uh, coming up uh, here in the uh, next uh, several weeks, uh, we have additional webcasts. Uh, so the next one will be uh, uh, actually run by Volker, um, draft, Drafting with Precision, where he'll cover some more uh, commands on draw, modifying, and, and uh, drafting aids. Um, the following week, uh, I will be running a, a class uh, dealing with uh, constraints in AutoCAD, uh, and also how to work with drawings that have constraints in them in, in AutoCAD LT. So if you're not familiar with a constraint, is a way to uh, associate two objects within AutoCAD so that they will work together. Uh, tentatively, and I've got to emphasize the tentatively, uh, we, the following week we'll be having a session for AutoCAD for the Mac. Um, th we're definitely going to do uh, a session on AutoCAD for the Mac, but uh, we're not sure if it'll be that week or not. Uh, so we're hoping to get that on the 4th. And then uh, we're going to go back to uh, working with uh, more 3D types of stuff, and Steve and uh, Victoria will be doing an introduction to rendering inside of AutoCAD. So uh, you know, please uh, you know, visit the, the link there to register for these web webinars if you're not already uh, registered for them. And if you want to uh, give us feedback, you can do so with that uh, link on the bottom of the page. So uh, just you know, check out our landing page. Just some, some additional links here uh, that will give you um, a all of the uh, previous uh, webinars that have been done. Uh, if you have questions that are uh, that you think of after the event, you can pick on this link here to ask additional questions. And if you just want to give us some feedback on uh, the webinar or future suggestions and things, there's a link for that as well. Okay. So uh, Volker, you want to go ahead and run the, the final poll and then we can uh, go and do some additional questions? I think that is a great idea. So. Basically, did you learn anything new today? Well, was this worth it? So, um, and keep in mind, it was a uh, an introduction, for the most part, a nice, um, a very in-depth, glossy overview. Actually, uh, marvelous job, Steve and Victoria. And it looks like uh, 91, 90 percent of you. Have learned something new, so uh, great deal. So let's go to, um, I guess, uh, Q and A, right? Whoops, I I was muted. Uh, so first, uh, there there was just a clarification to uh, one thing that uh, Victoria was was mentioning um, about. Uh, extrude or um, only working on closed objects or closed uh, 2D geometry. And uh, uh, somebody pointed out that uh, if you use extrude on, on an open 
polyline, it'll just create a surface as opposed to a solid. So you, you can use it on a, on a 2D object that, that isn't closed, but you get a different results. You get an extrusion or a surface instead of a, a solid. This no, Dave, um, I, I'm sorry, Victoria. Go ahead. I was, I was just going to say I, I didn't want to get into it um, in the since we're focusing primarily on 3D modeling objects um, or a 3D sorry 3D solid objects. Um, but yeah, if you um, if you extrude something that's not closed, it does extrude it as a surface. Um, Steve, do you still have control, or um, I can probably demonstrate really quickly. I can uh, I can demonstrate because there's a couple other things too yeah, with extrude and revolve. Um, there's a mode that allows them to extrude a closed object to a surface as well, and I think that surface is something that we'll go into in a future uh, webinar here. But I can, if we have some time and no one else has any questions, I can certainly show that. Um, so uh, I, I think that's a great idea. I do want to say that um, we have 15 minutes left on this webinar, so um, plenty of time to get questions in and uh, show this little piece. Um, anything after the top of the hour, though, uh, feel free to leave feedback uh, either through our email address, which is in the links that we provided, or um, on our landing page. So we're happy to, to try and answer as many questions as we can. Um, but uh, we also are aware that you're all busy, we're all busy, and we value your time. And uh, and actually, before I say anything else, one, one final thing is I and our team personally thank you all for being here. And uh, so we'll continue answering questions for the next 13 minutes. Thanks, Steve. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, no problem. you want me to give you back control, Steve? Uh, yeah, Dave, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the screen is being shown. Yep. Excellent. So I can actually, for the purpose of this, I'll turn off the grid here. When you use the extrude command on the bottom, you'll see select objects from mode. If you click on mode, it gives you a solid or surface. If I use surface, now let's look in a 2D wireframe. You can see that this is all a surface. Same goes for when you extrude just a single line, it will extrude to a surface. Now, if you use, let's say, uh, I use a polyline command along with an arc here. Bear with me one second. And we want to use the revolve command. Again, it has the mode on the bottom. You can use a surface, select the object, and then the center line, and revolve it into a surface. Let's just do, uh, we can do 90 degrees here. You can see how that just shoots that over to a surface. The surfing command, surfacing commands, there's a lot of them. They get really in depth. Um, I almost want to say that Loft will do the same thing. So you want to look at the mode. And there's also something that I run into while doing 3D drafting is that you may have changed that option. And all of a sudden you're doing a closed line, you get a surface. Just remember you can go back into the command and change it. It will remember your last, your last objects. Do we have anything else in there? Uh, so the only other question I see right now, uh, and maybe we'll get some more as we as we talk here. But uh, so want to know uh, once you have subtracted the Autodesk A from the tabletop and you have a void, uh, does press pull then create another solid in that space? That was the thing that I was trying to get to work <laughs> actually for myself. Um, Let's try that here. It does. And if you go below, so if I just did two inches, well, it did not. It, it should. For some reason, I'm not getting it to work properly on my machine at this moment. It has to be a bounded. Yeah. Like that, so. yeah, it has to be a bounded, it has to be a bounded geometry. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. One of the great things. Okay. Oh, good. As I say, uh, the other thing, there's another question about, uh, I, I think it's how to create a 2D view of the 3D model. So maybe using flat shot? Uh, yes, actually, we can do that. We can do that in the model here. Let me erase some of this other geometry I don't need. And using the command, and we'll just insert as a new block. <coughs> And create, and then what it does is it creates. See how it's elongated? It creates what exactly I was looking at in the view I was in, and creates one single piece of 2D geometry. There are other commands, and then when we dive deeper, um, that will allow you to create um, third angle projection views or your top, side, front, and isometric views in models, in paper space, so you can actually uh, annotate your 3D, your 3D models. And uh, let's see, how, how do you move one object and line it up with another object in 3D space? Now that is a tricky one. Um, you always want to make sure you can see, let's, let's move this object way off into the middle of nowhere. You always want to make sure you know your, your source point and your destination point. So I want my destination point to be this corner. I'm looking at my, my model here, my object. This is going to be my, my source point. Excuse me. So using the move command, Want to make sure that you can see and line up to that appropriate point. Because if not, if I just moved that, let's go back and look at it from the front. You can see when I was in the isometric, it looked like it was down and to the left. It was actually looking at it in the front view, down to the right, or top view, again down to the right. You just want to be able to make sure you have those points so it's in a 3D model. Sometimes it's almost better to be moving objects in an isometric view so you can have that proper view. Again, make sure that you use the proper O-snaps. Okay. And uh, I think there's a, there's a question about how to measure between 3D objects. Okay, well that can be done. Um, it's just using the distance command. You'll have, let's say I wanted to measure a distance from the bottom of here to that point, or let's say from this corner here where my cursor is to the top of that corner. Again, using the distance command, pressing F2 to show all the commands, you can see that angular it's a two foot five and an eighth of an inch. The angle is 82 degrees off the XY plane. And it's one foot nine on the Y axis, three inches in on the X axis, X axis and one foot eight inches tall. Okay. And there's a question about how would you draw a one-inch diameter rubber cord connecting to two to points on different planes? So I think that would be a combination of using a 3D polyline, maybe with a spline, and and then uh, doing an, uh, yes. Yeah. So the difficulty with that is uh, the it would be you would want one continuous line, one continuous path that you can see here. Um, for instance, let's say that was your path. The problem is, is that the 3D polyline that can draw a polyline in the X, Y, and Z axes cannot do cannot support curves. So you may want to use a spline or a series of um, a series of lines. And there is another command, but it's it's more of a more complicated modeling command called helix, which you can actually, it's like drawing a spring. 
Um, it's all dependent upon how you want to go about it. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work properly. And let's make the fit C point. Let's make that a ten. So now we can see that this is up on top. What we can do is we can take the circle that Victoria had done earlier, grabbing the center point, just bring it over close enough. <clears throat> this should work um, using the sweep command. Select the object to sweep. Again, mode, you can go into solid or surface, but we'll just do a solid for here, and then the path. And going into a hidden, you can see how it's swept from 10 feet above the zero plane down a little below the zero plane, back to the zero plane. Okay, I think we just have time maybe for one more question here. Um, just want yes. somebody wants to uh, just have you go over um, how to move. Where is it? So I lost my thing. Commands and tools used to orbit around the model. So uh, maybe if, if you want to just discuss uh, orbit again and and the view cube one more time. Yes, absolutely. So there's a couple ways to go around the model. Again, using the shift middle mouse button puts you into a, a free orbit. The other way that it's a little it's more rigid is using the view cube. So using the top, you can look at an angular in a, at a 45 from the from the west side, or the left side, left. Below looking at it southwest, front. Right. Another thing you want to look at as well is whenever you move, your UCS will show accordingly. So right now I'm in the right side view, but my XY plane is still in the bot is still in the top view. So if you wanted to draw something on that side, you'd have to change your UCS, which you can do here. I'm just showing. I'll just show real quick using a three-point. Three-point. It's going to ask you what your new origin is. We'll make that the origin. Looking for a point on the positive x-axis, positive y-axis. And now, see how your view cube has changed. This is now the top view. Again, going back. We'll go back to this and you can see how I'm upside down and we can change that back to parallel. There's many ways to move around. Um, I don't know how much more time we have, but in one of our future sessions, in this little teaser, we have objects of 3D orbit. Yeah, I believe it is, uh, is not on this one, not in here. I think it's in view. Yeah, so we have uh, less than a minute left, Steve. So. Ah, yes, so not enough time, but please stay tuned. We'll be doing more in-depth 3D webinars. Right, so we do plan to have this series continue about one a month, uh, and then the rest of the time focus on our back to basic and beyond the basic webinars. Again, your time is valuable to us, uh, so we really appreciate and enjoy you, uh, the fact that you attended, and um, we hope this was a benefit to you all. So from the West Coast and the East Coast of AutoCAD Technical Support, thank you again. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>